we will begin the round table discussion on special focus china the session would have five parts first asean and china market brief presented by mr adar chang ceo sbma then sg market overview by jafan ba general manager shanghai gold exchange international then sg international business overview by tracy yan market and strategy department sgei and the fourth would be experience sharing on china's gold market by mr alan liu head of bullion and commodity trading united overseas bank he would be present here and mr udhang yorong deputy Ma dental manager of marketing department jising mining group company limited and finally we will have uh, the present uh, question and answer if time permits uh, on behalf of uh, apmc appmc i welcome sg team and hand over this session to mr albert cheng Good morning. Uh, I'm very happy to see more than 20 people in the room at this hour, and also a couple of people online. And I have all the guests from Shanghai Gold Exchange uh, on screen. Uh, it's my honor to be invited to open this special focus session, China, put together by the Shanghai Gold Exchange International. Unfortunately, Roland Wang has some technical problem. We have not seen uh, his presentation. Otherwise, we'll have a very brief introduction of China market before we open this session. SE International started trading since 2014 and has been making steady progress in volume and geography explain expansion through its members. How is it linked to Singapore? Singapore has quite a few SCI members. Among the more active Southeast Asian based members, such as YLG and MTS, which are key players in the Singapore and is home base in Thailand. Not, not to mention other major bullion banks and their regional desks located in Singapore. They are masterminding the flow of trade of physical gold movement in the Asia Pacific region, which include two major regions in our region, two major countries in our region, China and India. On average, there are 800 to 1,200 tons of gold moving into China per year. SGEI is playing its role in this physical flow and facilitate the trading and transaction. Although the SCI has set up additional welding facility in Shenzhen, other than the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone, to promote participation, improve capital and logistic efficiency. However, the voice from the industry is perhaps a discussion on adding a new welding facility in Singapore would encourage more international member to make use of the arbitrage trading opportunity on currency, location, and state of physical demand and supply, thus bringing more action and liquidity with the SGEI. The platform at the APPMC would be a good starting point to have vigorous discussion on this and other related issues. Mr. Chao, may I ask you to take the podium? And thank you. Ms. Chow. You have to unmute, unmute your... Ms. Chow, you have to unmute your, your voice. Unmute. Yes, good. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chairman, 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 Chairman Kiel, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Zhao Fanghua, General Manager of Shanghai Gold Exchange International. I'm very pleased to be invited by SB 
MA to participate in APPMC again to meet with guests from all over the world online, sharing new achievements and views of gold market development and discuss future development. First of all, on behalf of SGE, I would like to express my gratitude to SPMA and Albert for providing us with this great platform and opportunity to meet online during this special period. Secondly, I would also like to thank Ellen Liu from UOB and Huang Yurong from Zixing Mining Group for joining this session despite their busy schedules. As our guest speakers, they will share their insights of China's gold market from the point of view of a GE member and experience with internationalization of China's gold market. Furthermore, I would like to thank all the guests, both online and on-site, who participate in the conference today. Thank you for your interest in China's uh, gold market and SGE. I hope that today's session will give you a new perspective of the Chinese market. After nearly two decades of development, China has formed a market covering the entire industrial chain of gold industry and the volume of gold production and consumption has ranked first in the world for many years. In 2021, China's domestic gold mining production reached nearly 330 tons and gold consumption reached 1,220 tons, an increase of 11.78 uh, comparing to 2019. Gold jewelry consumption continued to increase and sales of gold bars and coins also remained steady growth. As the center of physical gold trading, jewelry, and vaulting in China, SG is committed to maintaining the smooth operation of the domestic market and continues to explore new opportunities for mutual development with international gold market. In 2021, the total gold trading volume of SG was 34,800 tons return over of 13.08 trillion RMB. The international bond gold trading volume was 3,300 tons with a turnover of 1.25 trillion RMB. Since the beginning of this year, with the transformation of exchange business, institutional clients become more active in trading. As of at the end of May 2022, the total gold trading volume of international bond reached 1,800 tons. And in particular, we see a significant increase of price asking transaction whose trading volume reached 1,387.4 tons, a year-on-year -year increase of 125.7%. Since 2019, SG has worked together with international members and Chinese gold producers and consumers to launch a gold growth project for the international market and successfully launch uh, business models such as gold leasing, jewelry manufacturing and re-export after possessing. At present, uh, market participants in Singapore and Thailand and other regions have participated in the Gold Road projects, making full use of China's high-quality design capabilities and convenient investment and financing channel of SG to achieve win-win uh, development. With our SEP agreement coming into effect this year, we will further expand the applications of Gold, Code, Gold Road um, project, optimize business processes, and promote the connectivity of gold markets in our SEP member sanctions. The relapse of COVID-19 has delayed the recovery process of the global economy, which also impacts the stability of global supply chain and financial markets. As for the gold market, the research of pandemic also brings difficulties to transaction and transportation of physical gold. At the same time, under the current protest, um, uncertainties, uh, geopolitical tensions and inflation pressure, gold will continue to be good investment in years to come. Facing new challenges and opportunities in the precious metal market, we will continue opening up and cooperation, work with global market participants to meet challenges actively provide more development opportunities for global participants and jointly build a win-win gold market community. Next, I would like to invite my uh, colleague Tracy to brief you on the international development of GE, especially the efforts uh, made to connect with Southeast Asian market. Thank you. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, joining this session okay, today. Yeah, uh, for this part, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the overview of China SGE's international business. So, 
Uh, let's start with the uh, market performance of China's gold market last year. Um, with the years of developments in terms of the economy and gold industry as well, uh, China has become the world's largest gold producing, consuming, and foreign country. Uh, especially in last year, we see with the recovery uh, with the economy and uh, uh, the containment with the uh, pandemic that the uh, physical gold demand has uh, increased. Uh, last year, uh, the total gold consumption is more than 1,000 tons. Uh, especially, we see the increase with the uh, uh, jewelry and also gold bars and coins, which is, uh, we also see the increase compared to 2019, which is before the pandemic. And as for the market performance of SGE, uh, last year the total turnover across our market uh, is more than 20 trillion RMB. And in breakdown, we see we have more than three, uh, 34,000 tons of gold, and more than one point, uh, almost 1.4 million tons of silver, and more than 120 tons of platinum. And in terms of the market scale, uh, there are two um, points we want to highlight. Um, last year, um, we are the largest market in the world in terms of the physical gold trading volumes, uh, which is uh, 3,900 12 tons, and we also have the largest uh, gold delivery volume, uh, which is more than 8,000 tons. And uh, as of now, we have uh, 284 members, uh, which covering, uh, including the domestic and the international members. And for our domestic members, uh, we're covering 90% of the China's gold production output and consumption volumes, uh, and also 95% uh, of the country's refining capacity. And um, for SGEI itself, so uh, the international board uh, was launched in 2014 uh, by SGE, uh, which enables the foreign investors to directly uh, participate in China's market. So uh, as long as you uh, have the entity, uh, the offshore entity, either uh, the foreign entity or within China's free trade zone, you can apply to become a member of SGE, uh, uh, the international member, international customer, and use the offshore RMB, which is the CNH, to directly trade on SGE. So actually, you can see in here is that um, you are trading together with the domestic member yeah, and in the same trading pool. Uh, the only difference is that the currency you are using. And as for the market performance of SGEI, uh, we can see last year the total turnover of international board is over 3 trillion RMB. Uh, with uh, more than 3,000 tons of gold uh, and uh, more than 342 uh, tons, 100,000 of tons of silver. And we can see um, the international business has grown steadily over the past year since we launched in 2014. Uh, the tr total trading volume has grown from 45 billion in 2014 to uh, over 3 trillion last year. And uh, we have as of now, we have 95 international members and 79 international customers, uh, which cover in 12 countries and regions globally, uh, with uh, the major financial institutions, precious metal enterprises in the industry. And 60% uh, of them are financial institutions. Uh, for the next part, we're going to share with you about uh, some of the initiatives we have in the past few years. Uh, the first one we want to share is the Shanghai Prize, uh, which is for now we have Shang both uh, Shanghai Gold Benchmark Prize and Shanghai Silver Benchmark Prize. So uh, the Shanghai Gold Benchmark Prize was first launched in 2016 as the world's first RMB denominated uh, gold benchmark prize, uh, with the underline of the uh, 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 standard gold kilo bar uh, with the foreign eye finest. It's a tradable and reliable price, uh, which enhanced the China's precious metal market with the pricing uh, mechanism. And uh, in 2019, uh, SGE uh, licensed uh, CME to use the Shanghai Gold Benchmark Prize to further develop the futures contract. And CME uh, later has launched the uh, Shanghai Gold Futures Contract, uh, both RMB and US dollar denominated, uh, which further enhanced the international influence of the Shanghai Gold. And at the same year, 2019, we also launched the uh, Shanghai Silver Benchmark Price uh, to further enriching uh, the Shanghai price uh, pricing system. So uh, the Shanghai Silver Benchmark Price uh, is the uh, 15 kilo standard uh, silver ingot with the 4.9 finest. So let's take a look at the features of the uh, Shanghai price. So um, both Shanghai Gold and Shanghai Silver benchmark price are RMB denominated. It was set twice a day and was generated through multiple rounds of the auction uh, process, while the buy and sell volumes and the price uh, reach a relatively balance. And uh, two features we wanted to highlight here is first of all, for the benchmark trading, uh, 
as she is acting as the central counterparty, uh, which we can talk the centralized clearing and also the physical delivery for such uh, trade. And we also have a wide range of participant base. Uh, we have the fixing members and uh, reference numbers, which covering the major, uh, major uh, players in the industry, like the uh, banks, uh, like the uh, refineries, etc. And we also uh, have a wide range of participants, which means um, as you are, uh, if you are a member or customer of SGE and uh, you are qualified, you can apply for the access for the trading on the benchmark trade. And here, let's take a look uh, as the uh, application of the Shanghai Gold as example. So uh, since Shanghai Gold benchmark price has been launched in 2016, uh, it has been widely accepted by the market, by the industry that has been used in various scenarios. Uh, for example, we have the banks uh, which use the Shanghai Gold benchmark price as the benchmark for gold leasing contract. Uh, they also launched the uh, gold deposit products and derivative products such as like futures based on the uh, benchmark price. Uh, we also have security firms which launched the financial products based on Shanghai Gold benchmark price. Uh, for example, in 2020, uh, we have uh, the listed uh, for Shanghai Gold ETF. The first batch uh, was successfully listed for trading. Uh, lastly, let's take a look uh, at the market performance for the uh, Shanghai price. So last year, the total turnover of the benchmark trading uh, reached uh, 500 billion RMB. So uh, we can see the trading volumes of both Shanghai Gold and Shanghai Silver has increased uh, since its launch. So uh, for Shanghai Gold, uh, last year, the total turnover is uh, more than 1,100 tons, which is 14% year-on-year growth and doubled its volume compared to its first launch in 2016. And for Shanghai Silver, we have more than 12,000 tons, which is 11, uh, more than 11 percent year-on-year growth, and which is uh, triple eight times compared to its first launch in, 20, uh, in 2019. And uh, as mentioned previously, we also have the Shanghai Gold uh, ETF. So uh, at the moment in China's market, we, uh, to, in together we have 16 ETFs and nine of them are Shanghai Gold ETF. The total trading volume of gold ETF in secondary markets uh, is more than 1,600 tons per year. The next initiative we want to share with you is for the Guru project. So to solid implement the Belt and Road uh, Initiative and further promote internationalization of China's gold market, uh, SGE working together with our members uh, launched the uh, uh, Gold Road project in 2019. Uh, the project is aimed to facilitate China's uh, gold manufacturers to uh, con connect their uh, manufacturer uh, capacity. Uh, with the uh, physical gold demand alongside the Belt and Road country scenarios using SGE and SGI platform. So for now, we have several business models. Uh, let's just uh, go into details with them. Uh, the first one is the gold leasing plus jewelry manufacturing model. So, okay. so in general is that, um, for example, if you are an international member or, uh, or customer of SGE and uh, you either have the inventory already or you would like to buy or lease through the international world, and once, once you have the physical board, you can entrust the uh, jewelers or the manufacturers in China uh, to process the pro into jewelries for you. And uh, then after they process, uh, the, ex uh, the process the uh, gold, uh, you can, they will deliver the goods to you. And then you can export the goods after completion and sell the gold line. The second one is re-export after processing model. So it's a bit similar to the first one. So which you, you either use your own inventory or, or get the physical gold from the international port. And um, you can interest the uh, refineries in China to process to real cost bonds for you for the uh, into the size and finance which is customized. And then uh, once the gold bars or gold in gold are processed, uh, you can get the uh, gold and re-export. You either can re-export to another country or you can just directly sell on the international board. Uh, last but not least is the re-export business, uh, which means you can uh, buy, uh, if you buy or deposit or either these gold from the international board, and you can also withdraw the gold and you know uh, just re-export to any countries or regions you want. So normally the transition uh, process is about 1.5 to 2 days, uh, and with the time uh, reduction, we believe the whole process is keeping pace with the major international gold market as well. 
So uh, here, I think you can see no matter uh, what is your role, whether you're a producer, you're a domestic refinery or commercial banks, or the jewelers, you can find a role here uh, in, in this project and what you can benefit from that. Uh, due to the time limit today, we cannot go through the details, but if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask us. Uh, and also, I think later on, um, we have invited two of our guest uh, members to share uh, their experience with Transco Market, so they will also uh, touch base on the overall project as well. So thank you very much for your interest um, in us and thank you very much for joining the session. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We also have a virtual booth, so uh, you can always reach out, reach out to us. So um, coming up next, uh, um, as mentioned earlier, that today we have invited um, two of our members, um, which are also the active market players in our market. Uh, Alan from UOB and uh, Mr. Huang Yorong from uh, the Jing Mining uh, Group. So uh, first, let's welcome Alan. So Alan is the head of the billion and commodity trading uh, for UOB. Uh, Alan has obtained the Astrico trader license and has been part of the pioneer team to, uh, for the bank's uh, Astrico business uh, before he joined UOB in 2014. And Alan has more than 10 years uh, trade experience in bullion and commodities now. So uh, today he will share with us about UOB's Astrico business. So, okay, welcome back, Alan. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, um, CEO, SBMA CEO, Albert, Senior Management of uh, SGE and Distinguished Guests. Thank you very much for having me here to share my trading experience on uh, SGEI. China is one of the, uh, the world's top consumer producer and importer of physical gold. Shanghai Gold Exchange is the largest physical gold exchange in the world and thus plays an important role in the development of China's Belt and Road Initiative. In April 2020, despite we were in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, UOB was very fortunate and honored to join SGEI as an international member. Since then, UOB has been trading actively on the exchange. UOB's physical business, bullion business, spans across China and ASEAN countries, where physical gold from reputable refineries are supplied to UOB's customer. So why do UOB trades on SGE? SGE has very strict trading and delivery rules to protect the lawful rights and interests of trading parties and to ensure the secure operation of certified vaults and storage system for UOB's physical deliveries. The simple and standardized load-in, load-out workflows facilitate our import business. IAU can be converted easily to AU by import. SGE's stringent quality control on accepting loads in has gained international recognition. IAU can be freely and confidently taken out to offshore market. SGE's robust physical and margin settlement ensures easy pricing for physical contracts. As swap and forwards can be traded in SGE price asking market, it grows much bigger compared to the anonymous market. Tracy, next page, thank you. There are market makers like ICBC, OCOM who are active on the IAU price asking market. SGE can provide clearing service for trades registered on price asking platform. Its net settlement feature and active swap market allows convenient Boolean liquidity management. This is very important for trading uh, for management of uh, workflow. SG has been exploring new business models like recasting of large bars into kilobars, applying processing trade to Shenzhen Gold Smith Industry under its Gold Road project. I believe IAU volume would grow rapidly as more and more participants actually recognizes and understand its benefit of trading on SGE and subsequently joins SGE membership. SGE will definitely play a much bigger role for industry collaborations between China and ASEAN countries. Thank you.
Okay, uh, thank you very much for sharing, Alan. So uh, next, uh, we have also invited uh, Mr. Huang from Sijing Wine Group. Uh, as the Deputy General Manager of Marketing Department, Mr. Huang helped Sijing to establish a global corporate chase and sales system, uh, which laid the foundation for the growth of international business. Today, he will share with us um, the, uh, the construction of a um, global gold trading system and their experience uh, with gold Road project using Huang's Uh,大家可以看得到我的屏幕吗? Partners in the industry, good morning. I'd like to thank the uh, organizers for inviting us. I'd like to share our business in Zujing. First of all, I'd like to introduce our business. We are a mining company, uh, gold and uh, other metals. We have operations in four provinces and in 13 overseas countries. We uh, engage in the green uh, environment. We use uh, excellent quality uh, ingredients. Go business is an important business in our company. The volume reached 47.5 tons last year others uh, 270 tons. We uh, pay attention to ESG in our company. We have a gold trading system uh, to allow us to carry out our gold business smoothly. In a gold trading management system, we have three uh, main themes. We are the first uh, batch of members of the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And in Hong Kong, we have a, we are an international member and to allow us better interaction with our overseas members. So we are a member of the various uh, exchanges. We have built two support systems for gold trading. It allows us to carry out our transactions in Shanghai. For international business, we rely on a Hong Kong presence to carry out our international transactions. So it allows us to have a global presence in the whole world. We ensure that the gold that flows into Zijing complies with the Hong Kong exchange requirements. In, in, the, in terms of uh, business innovation, we have uh, participated in the Go Road project and we are one of the beneficiaries of this project um, which facilitates the export of gold overseas. In the value-added manufacturing, uh, we also use Hong Kong to be uh, our source of purchase of materials. And we have uh, also actively uh, participated in the operations in Hong Kong. Uh, through this Gold Road project, uh, we have uh, widened our channels overseas and we have also reduced the risks involved. And we have established a presence in the international arena.
In terms of the gold trading management system, we do have a well-developed system. In future, we will continue to work with our partners in Hong Kong and provide a supply of gold and experience uh, services to our customers worldwide. So I welcome opportunities to collaborate with other organizations. Uh, in the joint efforts of the Shanghai Go Exchange and the partnership of many uh, interested parties, we hope to promote the relevant business and raise the effectiveness and efficiency of gold trading. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan. So let's start with Alan. Uh, Alan, I think you, you touch base uh, with the EU business on the SGE market. So uh, can you share with us um, some uh, detailed business that actually uh, UOB Singapore is done since uh, international board? And also we've noticed that uh, the last few months um, there has something there has been some onshore, uh, the onshore gold premium is not very high. So uh, while the IU trading is actively uh, active according to its volume, does UOB um, do more than uh, sell kilobus in SGI? Okay, so um, there are two questions here. One is about uh, UOB China and Singapore, and the other one is about the, uh, the, the, the premium itself. Okay, let me answer the, uh, the first question first. Uh, so both UOB China and Singapore have their own strength. UOB Singapore having a large capital base has better funding advantage, fiscal bullion sourcing and international commodity trading capabilities. UOB China can import gold and has trading access to various onshore exchanges such as SGE and SHFE. So UOB China and Singapore have different client base and focus on different uh, business and region. UOB China's onshore customer ranges from miners, refiners, jewelers and banks. Combination of the two entities that would enable UOB Group as a whole to service the bullion supply chain in China and the ASEAN countries. And now on the, uh, the question on the, the premium, yes. So UOB not only just uh, sell kilobars into SGE when the premiums are low, you can actually buy the premium, uh, buy when the premium is low or even negative. You can buy the physical gold and then export, uh, move them out of into the international market and sell them in the international market. So UOB actually uses uh, SGE vault and our own UOB vault to actually manage the inventories. And we have access, we can move them around or we can lend them out in just now, uh, uh, Fang Zhong actually uh, mentioned about the Go Loan itself via SGE I platform. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. So uh, the next question is for uh, 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 some of your tradings uh, from Zhejiang Mining with the uh, Shanghai. So in the uh, selling process, uh, how do you use the Shanghai Exchange? Now for Zhejiang, uh, for our uh, transactions, uh, the platform go, uh, our group's uh, target is to make sure that, that there is a uh, cash inflow uh, which is uh, and I say we have uh, mentioned about the two uh, transactions uh, platforms uh, and by uh, such selling to add value to our um, portfolio and um, I think this is one of the most important things so we want to make sure that our team will be able to operate our business uh, as authorized by our board of directors and this year in 2022 uh, we will mention in uh, iron and uh, malls and also uh, we would uh, be about five percent of our total transactions and other than that uh, we'd like to mention that um, for copper and zinc, uh, we would also be uh, transacting. 
Thank you. Okay, so thanks again to Alan and Europe. 谢谢你给我们的分享。Uh, for the transfer market and how to participate in the transfer market. So uh, thank you all for uh, joining this session today. Thank you for interest in transfer market. I think as our speakers has also mentioned in today's uh, conferences, today's with the recovery of the economy, with the technology innovation, there are a lot of things we can do in this market that uh, we are keen to looking forward to talk to you uh, in the future for the future cooperation. Uh, so uh, although um, we are unable to join you uh, guys on site this time, but we're looking forward to seeing you in person in the future. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you very much. That was indeed a wonderful session from uh, Shanghai Gold Exchange, the top management of thank Shanghai Gold Exchange. Uh, we are so thankful to uh, Ms. Zhao Fanghua, General Manager, SG International, Ms. Tracy Yan, Market and Strategy Department, SGEI, and two of the guests who are users of SGEI, Mr. Alan Blue, uh, the head of Bullion and Commodity Trading, UOB, and Mr. Huang of Juzin Mining Group Company Limited. Uh, let's let's uh, have a picture with Mr. Uh, Albert Cheng. Like you know, uh, uh, please stay online. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much. Once again, a big round of applause for uh, Shanghai Gold Exchange for putting up such an in interesting and excellent session.